morning, everyone, and welcome our audience here and also our audience live on uh, YouTube. We're uh, very excited to have you join us for this event that's related to integrated reporting today when we kick off the momentum phase of integrated reporting. My name is Barry Melanson. I am uh, chairman of the board of directors of IIRC, uh, and in my day job, which sometimes is consumed a lot with high integrated reporting business. who are going to speak a little bit about where we are from an integrated reporting perspective in the momentum phase. Those colleagues are people who have been actively engaged in integrated reporting. Um, Jane Diplock, who uh, has, is a former member of the board, and I'll say a little bit more about Jane here in a moment. Peter Backer, who is also a former member of the board and vice chairman of our council. Uh, and Richard Howard, who is the CEO of IIRC. And they will each give perspective, and Richard will do a little bit more detail on the momentum phase itself. Strategy for the, moment, for the uh, momentum phase has really been the work of our board over a year. Uh, as we evaluated the marketplace and the feedback and participation levels in what was called our breakthrough phase. Uh, and that phase allowed us to take a look at the market, which everyone must do in these types of situations. And clearly, there is significant progress with integrated reporting, passionate support, and a lot of movement. But also, there are varying degrees of activities around the world. And we thought defining a set of focus and a set of resources uh, into this next phase for IR was the appropriate thing to do. And of course, we consulted with the IRC Council uh, through that process. And it was uh, overwhelmingly supported that this was the, the, the right thing to do. And really, the momentum phase is about taking accelerated actions and, and creating that, in fact, set of resources and focus to really achieve integrated thinking, which then supports integrated reporting and really constitutes a change in the business information flow and what we expect as citizens of the world with the relationship between business and society. It builds on two previous strategic phases, the creation phase, which IRC led and, cre and produced the outcome of, of a very important framework that is today the basis of, of what we're talking about in this sort of changing world uh, in this environment. Um, that, that creation phase led us to then the break, what we called the breakthrough phase, uh, which was really uh, demonstrated and documented with more than 30 very significant breakthroughs around the world in different ways, with different support, um, but in essentially the entire globe, different, different examples that could be used from that standpoint. And today, uh, at the end of this breakthrough phase, integrated reporting is now practiced in over 65 economies globally, including every G20 economy uh, and 20 of the 28 EU nations. And it is really a tremendous success story. In a relatively short period of time of about seven years total, integrated reporting has been normalized in countries such as South Africa and Japan, very significant progress, and remarkable growth in Malaysia and <coughs> India and Sri Lanka and Brazil. And even in more developed markets, uh, such as the UK, here in France and Australia, uh, very significant traction that's happening in those markets. And I think all of those leading countries uh, we can look to to increase our learning and to obviously replicate success. And so today we launch uh, a new strategic phase from what we would call as a position of strength. Uh, there are a lot of things that are happening in the marketplace. There are certainly a lot of different activities that people support and maybe even use different terms and come about it from a different way. But one important fact is that really the business community, the accountancy community, the regulatory communities, uh, people who come to the, the table for integrated reporting with different perspectives are all saying in one form or fashion that our business reporting system, integrated thinking, the commitment and tie between the corporate community and civil society uh, has to evolve. And that really is what integrated reporting, uh, integrated thinking and integrated reporting really actually delivers. 
And so to me, as we announce this momentum phase, the key component here is that we will continue to all of the players in this evolution that is occurring and as, as we live through these exciting and fast-paced changes of the world to do their part Greater perspective. You know, the International Federation of Accountants, IFAC, calls uh, IRC the umbrella organization, the convening place, the place in which different people who are really dedicated and passionate about making progress in this area can come together and we can sort out the roles that people have with the goal of creating clarity so that truly the man can be gained going forward. And certainly that includes standard setters and regulators but obviously people active in the business community and the investor community as well. And so I'd also like to just mention a bit about the progress uh, in my home country. The United States market is, a, is obviously a very important market, and admittedly it's been a bit slower in that market, and I think the momentum phase allows us to focus research in different ways where there are different needs in different countries. So as an example... short order, the overall awareness of integrated reporting has, has stepped up in the United States, and I think that's a very important success. And over the next three years, we expect to build on that success during our phase and see more progress, more support uh, in the United States market, and I think that that is very important. So with that in mind, with the, the launching of our next phase, uh, what I'd like to do is to bring Jane Diplock to uh, the podium. Uh, Jane has been involved, as I said in my opening comments, from this uh, from inception. In fact, she was chair of IOSCO when she was first asked to join this journey. And I think saying asked to join um, is probably a, not a fair way to describe Jane's passion and commitment to this particular area. Because it wasn't just joining. It was actively leading and actively helping to create a new future in this area. And obviously her position at inception as chair of IOSCO was an incredibly important one in this in this process. Um, so she's served on the IIRC's board and has been fantastic in that process. And today she chairs our governance and nominations committee. So her involvement has been throughout and in every possible way. She's non-executive today, director of the Singapore Stock Exchange, chair of the regulatory committee uh, of the Abu Dhabi uh, Great Global Markets and advisor to both the China and India security regulators. And she's also in a very important role as a member of the Public Interest Oversight Board, where uh, the activities of the assurance profession uh, is undertaken and ultimately the reliability of information uh, that is contained in integrated reports is a very critical part for the public. So her perspectives from that standpoint is also critical to this movement. So Jane? A little bit from the history perspective. Thank you very much, Barry, for that very generous introduction. I came into the integrated reporting movement in 2011 when I, as Barry has said, I was chair of IOSCO, the Global Organization of Securities Regulators, and I was invited to a meeting by Professor Mervyn King, whom I had known for a few years and whose work on corporate governance I greatly respected and admired. So when he invited me to this meeting, I had no idea what I was coming to. But I was coming to the confluence of at least two great visionaries, Professor Mervyn King's vision and His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales' vision on how the world is an integrated place and those of us who work in it need to think in an integrated way. I had read the Prince of Wales' glorious book, Harmony, and that gave me some insight into what we might be trying to do or starting at, in 2011. In that milestone meeting, I um, was very, very pleased to see the uh, huge support from corporates, the accounting profession, and a whole lot of other 
people who've been thinking very carefully in this space. So at that time, IOSCO had endorsed international accounting standards. IOSCO itself was formed um, and based on the IOSCO principles, global principles. And so I had a, a view that there was enormous value in having a single set of high quality standards in the worlds of financial reporting. I could also see that the information needs of our capital markets were changing. The gap was opening up between the market and book values of companies. And who could fail to observe the disruption to business models caused by the technological revolution, the mobilisation of fina financial capital and the accelerating pace of uh, innovation. And that those trends have only increased since the IRC's creation, making it harder for investors to value companies and for shareholders to trust them. At the same time, transparency has opened up our capital markets to new levels of accountability and a millennial generation is making the connection between value and values. These are permanent trends in my view, and they require permanent solutions. So I joined the IARC movement, open-eyed and aware of these mega trends. But I still had some reservations about whether a true shift on the scale being proposed could actually be achieved and whether the market would demand and accept it. We're after all dealing with decades of compliance thinking. And I wondered, was that compliance thinking hardwired into the culture of business and capital markets? But I was struck when I visited Japan in 2012, how the Stoke Tokyo Stock Exchange had started to embrace integrated reporting as a way of bringing greater insight over the value of intellectual and human capital of Japanese companies. And this was even before the IIRC had released the integrated reporting framework in December 2013. And I felt intuitively that the solution had to come from the market itself rather than through regulation. And so that has been proved. Not only was the framework developed by over 100 companies globally and 30 institutional investors, but today we see over 1,600 businesses adopting integrated reporting in 65 markets. And progress doesn't stop at companies. The government of New Zealand, my home country, has adopted multi-capital thinking as part of its living standards framework. And I was honoured earlier this year to help the Secretary of the Treasury launch the government's budget with the OECD wellbeing indices, an integrated approach. And so the governments are recognising that the management of multiple resources or long term that create value or have the p potential to deplete it, are important to be transparent about. And the World Bank has adopted integrated reporting to advance its own mission and manage the complex relationships that combine to advance its mission to end extreme poverty and to advance shared prosperity. So while the market has been the principal driver of adoption of integrated reporting, we must also acknowledge the increasing and important role of regulators in signposting, endorsing and advocating for an integrated reporting in various ways. And this is a theme that the IARC will pursue through the momentum phase. And of course, the cradle of integrated reporting is South Africa. And the integrated reporting movement will always be indebted to Professor Mervyn King, whose insight, intelligence and foresight have created not just a reporting framework that's adopted mainstream for South Africa, but a way of thinking, integrated thinking, that is becoming the international benchmark of good practice. So if I could sum up the past seven years, I would have to say it's been an incredibly exhilarating journey. We've sought to unify the corporate reporting system under the umbrella of integrated reporting with the corporate reporting dialogue, creating the conditions for significant alignment and simplification. In 65 markets, we have shown through testing and adoption that integrated reporting is viable, practical and valuable to business who want to show their value creation potential. 
And we've positioned our movement for the future by harnessing the academic evidence that proves the concept of integrated reporting works, that it leads to higher performance, a lower cost of capital, and a longer term investment base. And we've published evidence of the world's first integrated reporting academic database of over 200 studies. There could not be a better foundation on which to launch the momentum phase. And now I'd like to hand over to Peter Backer. Thanks so much, uh, Jane. Good morning. Uh, my name is Peter Bucker, uh, CEO of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, and now the Vice Chair of the IRC Council. And Jane reminded me, probably involved in IRC since 2011 myself. And what change have we seen since then? Um, it was a concept when we started. But if you look now, the world has the Sustainable Development Goals. Climate change has become a real phenomenon. Technology is shifting rapidly around us. And if you just make a list of all the initiatives that have been born in the world since IR was formed, it's quite impressive. Long-term capitalism, inclusive capitalism, reimagining capitalism, redefining value, and I could go on for a while. All that that means is the time for thinking multi-capitals has now truly come. And this is the foundation on which IR is based. So I'm really happy to be part of uh, the announcement of the momentum phase for IR today. Um, I think the concept is proven. Like Jane demonstrated, there's now a solid base of companies implementing this. The professional bodies uh, gathered in the IR Council uh, have all well understood it. But we now need to really work to scale up. To me, scaling up means a number of things. You know, the integrated reporting needs to be continued to be pushed. We need more companies and issuers to publish on an integrated basis. But equally, and maybe more important, the risk assessment in companies needs to become integrated. The decision making needs to become integrated. So integrated thinking it's going to be a crucial element in the momentum phase. When I think of momentum, I think of energy. You know, there's so many things that we need to do, so many connections we need to make. It's no longer weird in business to talk about natural capital or social and human capital. Remember that all was born in the integrated reporting framework. The assurance industry needs to work hard to regain trust in society, which continues to be under severe pressure. And the answer in trust is always the same. If you want to rebuild it, you need to align yourself with the values that society puts in front of you. Integrated reporting will be the way to do that. We need to leverage the many initiatives that are out there. IR is not a standard setter. It is the umbrella where all other initiatives should come together. But mostly, we need to continuously work in the background of this is about system change. This is not about adding a page to a report, but it is fundamentally rethinking the way that capitalism works. This is therefore bigger than the framework of IR or even the institution thereof. This really is, you know, meeting up to the demands that the Sustainable Development Goals put on us the pressure that is building in society around us, and that really requires a fundamental rethink of capitalism and the tools we use to manage, decide, and report on its progress. So it's fabulous to be here. I could talk on forever, but it's much in much better hands, uh, in, in the hands of Richard Howard, the CEO of, um, of Integrated Re Richard, can I give you the floor? Into the Thank you. Uh, council meeting which will launch the momentum phase and which will see the election to the chair of Don Barton and the election to the chair emeritus of our founding chair Mervyn King and Mervyn and Don are with us here with the board members of the IRC and with the members.
thank you so much to all of you for being part of today's event. You've heard already this morning about the aspirations that we have for the growth of integrated reporting and thinking in the world. You've heard about the proud and important origins and history of integrated reporting. Thank you, Jane, for that. And you've heard about our vision for the future, a vision which is about changing the corporate reporting system of the world and moving to a world of sustainable development and one of financial stability. Now, today is the launch of the momentum phase. I want to talk to you about what is different about this moment, what we've been doing in the breakthrough phase and what we will continue to do, but more importantly, what we will intensify, what we will do differently in this new global strategic phase for integrated reporting, the momentum phase. In the International Integrated Reporting Council, we work to six key strategic themes in how we pursue our work. Let me describe to you and illustrate how the momentum phase will make a difference under each of those themes. The first is, make, is the global adoption of integrated reporting and the progress towards it. During the course of the breakthrough phase, we have grown awareness of integrated reporting and we have spread that initial adoption of integrated reporting in markets around the world as Jane has described. In the momentum phase, we will grow that adoption. We will seek uh, extra adoption in underdeveloped markets and we will give emphasis on what drives momentum in the target markets that we have around the world. Our second strategic phase is mobilizing the investor pull for integrated reporting. Investors were there on our working group defining the framework. Investors are here part of our governance in driving forward integrated reporting. It's international investors who see integrated reporting as the future benchmark for their work. During the uh, breakthrough phase, we undertook investor engagement with specific investors and investor groups in order to advance the principles of integrated reporting. In the momentum phase, we recognise that big changes are happening in the investment community and we will be engaging with them with the big initiatives on shifting capital to the long term and as the world moves to a system of sustainable finance. Our third a strategic theme is alignment of the corporate reporting system. As Peter says, not new or additional reporting, but reforming mainstream corporate reporting itself. We are very proud that the IRC drew together the corporate reporting dialogue. We've made important progress over the course of the last two years. The dialogue has absolutely been established. But in the momentum phase, we're moving beyond dialogue to actual action on alignment. In a few weeks' time, we're going to be announcing a major project with all of the partners in the Corporate Reporting Dialogue, which will bring about substantial alignment between us and give great confidence to the market that that confusion which exists about different initiatives is on its way out. We are proud to be driving that process. Our fourth strategic theme is making it easier to adopt integrated reporting. During the breakthrough phase, we focused on our examples of best practice. Do look at them on our database, constantly updated, and a great free learning tool for those of you that are implementing integrated reporting. Last year, we undertook a global framework feedback exercise, a worldwide consultation for the first time in three years that involved events in 19 countries and over 400 submissions. Off the back of that, what the market has told to us, we are developing new resources to make it easier to adopt integrated reporting. Our fifth strategic theme is to uh, support a supportive policy and regulatory environment to advance the aims of integrated reporting and thinking. During the breakthrough phase, we've been successful in seeing integrated reporting cited in a great number of corporate governance codes worldwide and in the guidance of many stock exchanges worldwide and we thank our supporters who have helped to achieve that we will continue that momentum during the momentum phase 
But in the momentum phase, we will put increased evidence on working with financial market regulators, our friends in IOSCO and all of their national members. We look to them not for regulation for integrated reporting, but for signposting, for endorsement of integrated reporting. And we thank them for the dialogues we're all have, already having towards that. Our sixth and final strategic, phase, uh, strategic theme is for the IRC itself to be a viable and effective body. In the breakthrough phase, we've been careful to maintain and to develop the convening power of this council, which is at the crux, the cornerstone of what integrated reporting is and must be. We will continue that during the momentum phase, but we will ensure with the council that, that integrated reporting is seen as being a key tool for the great external trends, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, the massive technological change which is happening and will happen more in the future, the trends towards purposeful and inclusive capitalism as a response to the loss of trust in business. So those are the key changes that we will see in this momentum phase. I won't go through them all, but the next slide gives some detailed examples of how some of the examples will be different. Barry's already talked about the exciting plans that have begun and will develop in the United States. The same is true in China, where by the end of this year, with thanks to our, our partners, the Ministry of Finance of China, we will have a series of pilot companies for integrated reporting there for the first time. We'll see a new focus on integrated thinking as well as reporting. It's always been a, a key part of what we do. But we've created a special interest group on integrated thinking, which over the next year or so will produce some very important materials on how we grow integrated th thinking uh, in business around the world. We'll carry on working with our friends in IFAC. Their position paper that integrated reporting is the future of corporate reporting was a very important development of the last year. But we're working with them so that their national accountancy institutes worldwide champion and develop integrated reporting market by market, jurisdiction by jurisdiction. On alignment of the corporate reporting system, that alignment project is a major part of our sets of priorities for the next period. And I thank Ian McIntosh, the chair of the corporate reporting dialogue, who's in the room for us for this launch and for the council meeting here today. We're very pleased that when the International Accounting Standards Board decided to review their management commentary practice statement, that they uh, asked the IRC to appoint our chief technical officer as part of the advisory team to that work. We think this can be a major step forward in advancing both the principles and concepts of integrated reporting, but ensuring that that becomes a mainstream part of the corporate reporting process. And we will ensure that there is new emphasis in this momentum phase on reducing the cost and complexity of corporate reporting. This has to be better reporting, not more reporting. It is more concise reporting. It is more material reporting. There is a strong business case for this movement towards integrated reporting and thinking. We want that to be heard and seen more during the course of the momentum phase. <coughs> and on ease of adoption, off the back of that framework uh, feedback exercise, we have announced a two-year programme of advice and guidance uh, that our technical team is, is undertaking uh, and which will be uh, uh, piloted here in the council meeting later today. We hope that that will help businesses and others implementing integrated reporting to overcome any obstacles to implementation that they have said to us exist. We've developed a new oversight capacity for our academic network with thanks to five different universities. And we will see the growth of the evidence base for integrated reporting, already more than 200 pieces of research that Jane referred to in her presentation. And we have established a training programme on integrated reporting worldwide. Over the next period, we will enable that training programme to be extended to help the practitioners understand uh, the pathways that exist for the adoption of integrated reporting as we seek to establish those pathways with countries and at the, and at the world level. And in, in terms of the uh, policy and regulatory environment, we have established integrated reporting as a principle of good corporate governance in the 21st century. In the momentum phase, we want to make sure that case is better heard and understood in boardrooms. 
because this is about better corporate governance. It's about the things board members want for themselves. And we celebrate the partnership that we have with the global network of director institutes. And we think increased emphasis on, on the adoption of integrated reporting with director organisations can be a key part of this momentum phase. We will also have increased profile in the multilateral institutions. This week in Argentina, sadly parallel to these proceedings, the big summit of the B20 and G20 has taken place. But we are proud that for the first time in three years, the B20 communique will recommend integrated reporting, and it will do so by highlighting that integrated reporting is a key tool for restoring trust and promoting integrity of business. It seems to me that the IRC is trying to achieve three things. Influencing capital markets with a focus on long-termism, bringing about changing to the corporate reporting system to advance a multi-capital model, and encouraging companies to manage and execute risk by embedding integrated thinking. We're aware that the world is changing. You don't need me to say that. The world of the sustainable development goals, of globalization, of reaction against globalization, of the trends towards low carbon growth, of switching economic and geostrategic power in the world, of the fourth industrial revolution, and of the global financial crisis and the threat that it could happen again. Business as usual is not an option. Change is happening. The International Integrated Reporting Council, the concepts of integrated th thinking and integrated reporting must be a tool to, change, to be a change in long-term success for the business. Now, I'm aware that we're in Paris, and it's a very important day for the IRC, for our leadership it, uh, and the leadership itself. I thank everyone in the room again for being part of this process. But I am very aware that the ability of the International Integrated Reporting Council to move to this new global strategic phase is because companies, investors, stakeholders around the world have both piloted and now grown this adoption of integrated reporting during the breakthrough phase. So today is not our launch, it is your launch. And I want to thank you for all the efforts that have enabled integrated reporting to get to this stage and for all the work we will do together in order to bring momentum to the integrated reporting concept and values. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. That was fantastic and very exciting, and I think shows the commitment of all of the people involved in integrated reporting and those providing resources to create the support um, the, the, the environment and really to be successful. I'd also like to thank uh, Jane and Peter for their reflections. Uh, and before I bring this to a close, I want to thank all of the individuals who believe in IR and who are participating today. Today is a momentous day. So we use a momentum phase, but it is a momentous day. Yes, it's a momentous day because we launched this and we really put more energy and, and a new passion. And I would call on each and every one of you who've been involved in this to renew that passion today. And it's a momentous day, as Richard mentioned, of this project and the person probably most instrumental in us being here today. And when we celebrate new milestones in the future, in 50 years, the person most, most responsible for us being successful in that uh, is moving from chairman of the council to chairman emeritus, and that's uh, Mr. Mervyn King. And so those here with us um, physically in Paris for the uh, council meeting will have an opportunity for to share with us and recognize Mervyn later today. And for those of you joining us uh, on the YouTube feed, please know that uh, the individuals here, and particularly Mervyn, uh, who have this passion to drive this forward, um, that him moving into the next phase is also a symbol that um, he trusts us to continue the passion and the commitment to move it forward. And I think there is no greater tribute to him than for us making sure that we're successful moving forward. So thank you. We look forward to partnering with everyone, people who are our current partners and people who we may not even know today to really earn success in the marketplace, the business community, 
and ultimately with the partnership between business and society at large. Thank you very much.